Hello, this is Roger Jones from the Express. We have visiting with us today virtually from Vienna, Austria, John Casti, well-known mathematician and science writer. He's taken an unusual course change in his life, and he's here today to tell us about it. John, you've had a long career as a mathematician and a science writer, but uh, recently your life has taken on a different direction. Can you tell us a little bit about your new project? Yeah, I a couple of years ago, I decided to shift over from writing popular science nonfiction into uh, writing fiction. And part of it was motivated by, uh, I sort of officially thought about myself as being retired. And I thought, well, I'm going to retire. Retired from what? And retired from doing the stuff that I've been doing for 40 years or more. And so I, I always had in the back of my mind to write a work of fiction, a novel. And I had even taken a lot of notes and thought about it very, very hard at one time about 20 years ago after some rather uh, uh, interesting personal developments. And so I dug up those notes and decided I would finish that book. And so that's why this is not only a work of fiction, it's a work of commercial fiction. And it has a subtitle, a psychosexual thriller. So it's a thriller. It's not just a work of fiction, it's a thriller. And it is a thriller in many ways. There were a lot of different uh, components to that activity of two decades ago. And I think I captured most of the exciting ones and added a few that didn't happen, but could have. And I added even a few things that even couldn't happen in real life, but did happen in my pages of my book, Pray For Me. So that's how it basically came about. And it was a, it was a pretty long process, it took more than a year to actually make the transition from writing nonfiction to fiction. I had a very good advisor in that regard, a fellow who used to be chief editor at HarperCollins in New York. And after seven hard revisions, rewrites actually of the book, it finally got to a stage where both he and I were happy with it. And that's what the reader will be seeing now. All novels are autobiographical to some sense, uh, particularly first novels. Can you speak to that? Yeah, well, first of all, in the ordinary literary parlance, this book is something that's called a roman a clef. Roman a clef, that means it's a novel, a roman, that's the word, German word for a novel. But it's a novel that's uh, essentially based on real historical actions and activities. And the main char character in a roman a clef almost always is the author. Might be a woman, might be a guy. In this case, it's a guy, it was me. And it, the, the real life part of it was it involved a meeting of an older guy who was a scientist, a complexity scientist actually, namely me, and a younger woman, 25 years or so younger, who was a researcher uh, in this area from about a very different part of the world. I was living in Santa Fe at that time. And so I had a um, romantic interlude with this woman, it lasted four months, it was pretty tempestuous. And it turned out she had some pretty severe psychological disturbances in my opinion, including tendencies toward both homicide and suicide. And so since I managed to survive the experience, I thought I would put it into a novel. So yes, the main character of this book, Victor Safir, is John Casty in disguise. And anybody who knows me, when they open that book, they'll realize in the first pages that that's me. And the uh, antagonist in the book, the woman, is a fictionalized version of this lady who came uh, from a distant land. In the book, she comes from a very different distant land. And they interact over the course of um, I would say a few months, like in real life. And so 
that's the story. Now, how the characters change and their personalities and so on over the course of the book, that naturally had to happen because there were things that happened in the book that were, that were very different than what actually happened in real life. They, they could have happened that way in real life, but they didn't. And I had to, to some degree, change some aspects of the character's view of the world, and their interaction with each other, in light of what did happen in the book, not what did happen in real life. And there were events that I even made up in the book. After all, it's a work of fiction. And I made them up for the sake of sort of livening up the story. And part of what I made up was to give both the male and female, the protagonist and the antagonist, uh, a different view of each other, especially as events unfolded in the book, different view than what they had in the real life interaction. That was a necessary part of writing the book. So I would not make any claim that this book is an autobiographical account of some real world thing. It started its life as an idea that what came from the real world, but that idea got developed in a lot of different ways to make this, in my opinion, and in my advisor's opinion, a lot better story. This book takes place in several exotic locales around the world, quite interesting locales. How did that come about? Yeah, well, to be very honest with you, uh, of course, naturally, I myself have spent a lot of time in all of those locales that are in the book and a lot more besides those. So I don't think that the two main locales in the book are Santa Fe, New Mexico and London, England, neither of which I find especially uh, exotic. Uh, there are uh, other sections where things happen that are important to the, to the book, uh, but they're, they're pretty name, uh, familiar places with maybe one or two exceptions. One of the places is Vienna, Austria, uh, where I live. So again, I don't regard that as especially exotic, but for many people it is, because if you haven't been here, every place is exotic. Uh, another place that uh, uh, turns up in the book is Paris. Uh, another place that turns up and occupies a section or two of the book is towns in Northern Italy, Venice and Trieste. Uh, Trieste is actually right at the top of the Adriatic Sea. It's right at the border of Italy and uh, Croatia. And, and then there's, there's one section that takes place in a very important one in the British Virgin Islands, in an island called Tortola. Uh, again, a place that I've been to three or four times. So uh, I was able to actually, I hope, capture some of the spirit and flavor of these places, even for people who haven't been there. And in my future books, I'll probably continue to do the same things because I find books more interesting if the characters are moving around and moving around in different places and maybe even places that, that are a little bit uh, offbeat uh, for the typical readers, especially readers of this kind of book. So that's how these particular places made their appearance in the book. But Although you didn't mention it in the book, uh, there were enough hints in the book for me to put the story in uh, 1999, uh, just before the dot-com crash. Uh, those were heady times for people in the uh, technology world. Uh, did, I, did I misread that timing? No, not at all. In fact, uh, you, you did a great job of pinpointing it. I mean, uh, if somebody had, would have asked me, where, where were you thinking about? My real answer would be, well, I wasn't really thinking about anything particularly special. What I can say is that the real world event that set off this whole train of thought that I've developed in the book actually happened in um, July of 1998. So uh, you weren't too far off because it, it lasted from, it basically occupied my attention for the second half of 1998. And so, but if somebody asked me, well, what's the approximate time frame of this book? The simplest thing is just to say roughly the year 2000. Um, so, so you were uh, right on the mark, Roger. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. We could go on 
quite some time like this. Uh, it's a fascinating story. The book is Pray For Me, P-R-E-Y, Pray For Me, by John Casty. And if you'd like a copy of the book or you're looking for some uh, free samples, then uh, check out the links below. I am Roger Jones for The Express. Be safe and good day.